Come along, Dr. Grimmig. I think you'll find a great improvement in the boy. Thank you, Mrs. Bedwin. Oh, Mr. Brandler? How do you feel today, my boy? Oh, very happy, sir. May I stay here always, sir? If you wish, if you wish. Here's the doctor come to see you. Well, he's certainly looking better, but you're still not sleeping. Where are you? Oh, yes, I sleep very well, sir. <sighs> Bad dreams, though I have no doubt. Nightmares, eh? No, sir. I don't have dreams. Oh, thought so. But you're hungry, aren't you? No, Doctor. No, you're not hungry. Not thirsty, are you? Why, if that boy is thirsty, I'll eat my head. Are you? I'm actually rather thirsty. Just as I expected. You know, it's very natural for a boy to be thirsty. You may get him a little tea. Oh, thank you, Doctor. May I get up then, sir? 
Now say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ooh, I think you may. And take a little fresh air. Now, Mrs. Bedwin, don't let him be too warm, but be careful not to let him be too cold. Certainly, Doctor. You'll be glad to be up again, Oliver. Do I wear these? Oh, you can't wear your old ones. They've gone into the furnace. Hurry now. He's a fine-looking boy, don't you think, Grimwig? Couldn't tell you. I only know two sorts of boys. Mealy boys and beef-faced boys. <laughs> and which is Oliver? Mealy? Where does he come from? You know, I haven't the faintest idea. Uh, he was arrested for stealing my pocket handkerchief. And when the shopkeeper told us what happened and he was released by the magistrate, I brought him here to make what amends I could. But I must confess, I find myself strangely attached to the child. Oh, he's deceiving you, my good friend. He has a fever. What of that? Fever's not peculiar to good people, are they? You know, bad people have fevers sometimes, don't they? You say, he stole your pocket handkerchief, didn't he? Well, he'll steal some more, sir. Now, what do you know of him? Nothing. Only that he's an orphan. And yet... It's strange. There's something about the boy's face. I can't explain it, but somewhere I seem to have seen him before, a long time ago. Oh, stuff and nonsense. You're imagining things. Uh, yes, what is it? There's someone to see you, sir. What does he want? Books you ordered from the bookseller, sir. Oh, yes, thank you. Now, I've got to give you some... No, wait, come back. No, really. And I particularly wish some books to be returned today. Oh, why not send Oliver with them? Oh, yes, you do let me take the books for you. Please, sir. Uh, very well. If you wish, you shall. Now, here's what I want you to do. You will take these books to Mr. Jessop's. It's just down the road. Uh, tell him you've come to pay the four pounds ten that I owe him. Here is five pounds. Now, don't rush, but I shall expect you back in ten minutes. She's a very pretty lady, isn't she, sir? Yes. It's a portrait of my daughter, Agnes. I'll take the books, then, sir. Yes, you take the books. Now, you really don't expect him to come back to you with a new suit on his back and five pound note in his pocket? My dear Mr. Bronlow, if he does, I'll eat my head. Uh, Quimmick, take a look at that portrait. Don't you see an extraordinary resemblance between my daughter, Agnes, and Oliver? Can't say I do. Well, when the boy returns in ten minutes, I think you will see. Yes, Mr. Bronlow, ten minutes.